A solar-powered shed light. Let's open it up and see what's inside. The picture in the front shows quite a lot of sections of silicon in the solar panel, but that is not always a guarantee you're going to get much silicon on it. This one came from a local shop, which makes a refreshing change. It did not come from eBay. It came from Jack's in Ramsey in the Isle of Man. So there's the light. Uh, and the here is the solar panel and a bracket. Hmm, what's the bracket going to? Oh, the bracket clips in here. Okay. I'll put the box out the way. So, first thing I'm noticing here is lots of silicon. This is good. It's, it's actually pretty much filled this area. So, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, it's a 5.5 volt panel. I think it said in the box, and oh, that's all squished up. I think it said in the box that it was 3.7 volts, suggesting it's the, the classic 4.2 volt lithium cell, because that's just a mid voltage. Let's plug it in. Plug it in, and it lights. So that's not bad. Um, right, let's take it apart. I'm guessing that the battery is in here. I don't think it's an 18650, although they could fit one in here. Let's open it. Four screws. I'll open the light as well, and we'll see if there's much in it. I would expect the lithium cell to be in this one because it does have the switch on it and it does seem to have that void for structure. There is the lithium cell. Battery must be recycled or disposed of properly. Oh, you don't just throw it in the bin. Date code 15-4-2022, which is pretty good. Let's see if we can get it out. Can I get it out? Maybe not. Fingernails. Smart solar lithium, 500 milliamp power. It's a 14-500, which is a... The size, 14 millimetres diameter by 50 millimetres long and 3.7 volts. So it is this a 4.2 volt cell. Let's actually hike that out. Since I'm going to be getting the circuit board out anyway. Oh, it's the also marks in the back. 14500, 3.7. Let's zoom down this. What I'm seeing here initially is not much. Is there anything else in the back of that circuit board? There's the chip. A capacitor and a resistor. Is there... A Anything in the back? So I'll take these two screws out. Just the switch. That is it. There's a chip for a number on it. Eight one eight three. Okay. Right, I'll take a look at that circuit board. Let's pop this open and see what's inside this. So is this just going to be the, well, this is just going to be the LEDs, but are there going to be resistors as well? Let's zoom back out to here. Is it going to be something sophisticated or just a panel of LEDs? Maybe just one or two LEDs. Last few turns in that screw. We have a huge sneaking parallel array of LEDs. There's a little pull cord switch, power jack, that is it. Uh, all the circuitry is in that unit there. I wonder if that resistor is the series resistor for these then. Right, okay, tell you what, I shall uh, take the circuit board out, take a picture of it, and uh, we can reverse engineer it and see how this works. One moment, please. And resume. It's the first time I've seen this particular chip. This is a YX8183. And it's like the classic little four-pin boost chips you get in standard solar lights, but this one is optimised for lithium use. And it lets you choose whether it's going to be a standard lithium-iron battery or a lithium-iron phosphate. So the only two components on it are a decoupling capacitor across the battery, because this also controls the charging, and that's to provide stable detection of the battery's charge condition. And also a 0.33 ohm resistor, which... Isn't in series the LED? Well, it is in series the LEDs, but it's being it's got a ninety millivolt threshold on here. That's point zero nine volts, and it detects the voltage drop across that, and it's got a built-in current regulator for the LEDs. Very interesting. The reason these uh, pins are all connected to the negative here is because they are programming different functions. So we've got the 
switch here. This is a switch that uh, ultimately you may wish to just shunt this out once you get it. The only time it's ever going to really be used is in long-term storage, but I'd recommend just shunting these out because when water gets in, they do fail. Uh, and we've basically got a connection for the solar panel and a connection for the battery and then the output to LEDs. That is it. Right, now, well, let's take a look at decision decisions. Let's take a look at the chip itself first. Cue the data sheet. I'm going to tame this down a bit. Taming down now. So the chip has two distinct sections. It's got the battery charging current regulation section, and then it's got the LED driver section. The solar panel connects here, and it goes via this FET to the uh, battery. And the battery voltage is sensed, and you've got a mode pin down here. Now, if that mode is tied to negative, it sets it for the standard 3.7 volt average voltage battery, the one that charges up to 4.2 volts. But if you either leave it floating, or you take it to the positive rail of the battery, it will effectively turn it into a uh, life PO4 unit and it will adjust all the voltage thresholds accordingly, not just the end of charge voltage level, but also the point it cuts off and, and stops driving the LEDs and then the point it will actually cut back in again because it does have hysteresis, it does that, have that little uh, voltage threshold that once the LEDs cut off, it, they won't just cut on, on again until the solar panels put some charge back in. Other things worth noting. There is the feedback sense resistor, and it's got a sense voltage of 90 millivolts on that pin, um, which means that as the current flows through, that uh, MOSFET will just vary its output to regulate it. And in the case of this one, it was uh, 0.33 ohms, uh, equates to 273 milliamps. It's roughly measuring 90 millivolts at that point. It's got an enable input, not sure why, but that was just tied low. And at CDS, now I'm guessing that's cadmium sulphide. It looks as though that's for the option of either adding a light sensor or sensing the intensity level from the solar panel itself. But in this case, it is tied to the negative connection, which means it's just on all the time because this is a, a shed light. I tried the light in uh, a dark room in the house and it was surprising how much light it put out. It was very useful. Here's the schematic and no need to draw it, just add some colour, because this is the manufacturer's schematic. Uh, the solar panel, incidentally, and I don't like this aspect of it, I like the solar panels where they've got the silicon strips bonded onto fibreglass and then the layer of resin over the top. But this one, it looks as though it's just they're laid onto the plastic and then they've got the resin on. And the downside of that is that I've found in the past that some of these solar panels have a different thermal coefficient of expansion of the silicon and the plastic and resin and it can actually, in hot sunshine, it can actually crack the solar strips. I'm not sure if that's going to affect this one or not, but if it does, you usually see a distinct white line appears across them and when it does, that really impairs the whole solar panel, it hobbles the whole thing. Quite annoying when that happens. I don't know if they still do it. Let's zoom down this a little bit, since this is what we're wanting to see. So in this case, the current sense, the uh, light level sense, instead of being tied to the top of the solar panel via a resistor, I don't know if that resistor tunes the level it trips at, or if it's just to basically avoid current just going straight. I'm not really sure why, if that resistor is essential or not. Uh, but that's not used. It is literally just tied to negative. The blue here indicates that all these pins are tied to negative. The LX is the switched output to LEDs. Red is the battery positive. Orange is the solar panel positive, And the Feedback is the sense resistor for the LED current. There's a switch they show on the schematic for choosing between uh, the 3.2 volt lithium cell and the 3.7 volt lithium cell. That can apparently just be left floating, but in this case it is just tied to negative. The solar panel, the only capacitor is the one directly across the battery here. Um, and the, the LED is connected between the positive output of the battery through that MOSFET inside, through that current sense resistor to the zero volt rail. That is it. There's not really an awful lot, is there? It's uh, very good, very simple. So that is more or less it. It's a nice enough little light. It does put out a useful amount of light. Under uh, that current, it's going to give you, given that it's current regulated, it's not going to do that thing that the intensity gradually lowers. It's 
pretty much going to run at the full intensity all the time. And you can change that resistor if you want. If you've changed it from one extreme to other 0.33, if you increase the value, the current goes down. For instance, 10 ohms is 9 milliamps. Um, the other thing is, it relies purely on the amount of current the solar panel can put out. You cannot exceed 600 milliamp. But in this case, I think this one is about 150 to 200 milliamps max for these size of uh, solar strips. But uh, it's basically just a l taking all the energy, all the current that comes from the solar panel and putting it straight to the lithium cell to top it up and then turning it off. It doesn't have that current regulation facility. It is purely, basically, whatever there is, it puts to the lithium cell. And that is it. It probably still is that slight issue that these things have. Technically speaking, you shouldn't charge a lithium cell below zero degrees Celsius, which is not great in a sunny winter's day, because what happens is that the, the lithium cell operates by the lithium ions moving back and forth between the two electrode materials. And the lithium ions do what's called intercalcation. They actually blend into the material as they go across. At very low temperatures, I don't know if it's like molecular contraction of the material that the lithium can't get in. It forms a layer on it instead, and that can increase the damage to the battery in the sense that it's a concentration of lithium in one area. But it can also potentially damage the thin divider membrane if it doesn't form up in a sort of controlled manner. It can actually pierce the membrane. But that's just one of these things. I think it's just collateral damage. I guess I wouldn't. You wouldn't really maybe put this in a flammable surface. I'm guessing. I've never. I've seen the batteries explode and blow their guts out, but not burst into flames as such. Uh, and I don't know how that will affect this one. But ultimately, if it's going to charge at sub-zero temperatures, yeah, it's going to affect it. Um, I suppose ultimately, if you were in a situation that was an issue, you could have a separate enclosure for the lithium cell and put it inside in a sort of protected area. I'm uh, not really sure it depends on the application. But that is it. The fairly neat little solar shed light. It's actually not too bad at all. And that chip is really interesting. 